Uh, hey friends, welcome to St. Judo Cliffs Beauty in the Pandemic series. Obviously, we've changed locations, so I think you know we're in for something special. And so today we have Courtney Coco Riggs, who's joining <laughs> us along with, I think there's 12 ladies behind us as well that yeah. you'll see come in and out. But what we really want to do today was feature Courtney, who has a garden, who has these chickens, and who's learned a lot about beauty in, in the rhythms of life and in the rhythms of gardening and all of that. And so it feels like this is a little bit of a God moment because we had a member of St. Jude come to us and say, it was Martin's daughter, Molly, say, <laughs> we should really do a theology of the chickens. So I pitched the idea to Coco, not having known anything going on in her heart. And she really actually thought, like, actually the Lord was kind of telling me at the same time. So it's really fun to be here. Um, and I just personally enjoy Courtney a whole lot, so I'm excited to be in her backyard and getting to talk about that. So Courtney, why don't we just start with an introduction yeah. for folks to get to know you and then just, um, yeah, your family and a little bit about you and we'll jump in from there. Um, well, I'm Courtney, married to Will. My daughter is Minnie. We recently adopted her, um, finalized adoption in March. And so it's been a really exciting time and I've added mom to one of my roles that I take on. I'm also a counselor at a middle school, a charter middle school here in Oak Cliff. Um, and so I get to deal with feelings all day, every day. And it's, <laughs> it's, it's fun. It's a lot of work, um, but something I'm really passionate about. Um, and I've been living in Oak Cliff for seven years now. And so it's really, it's home. And I feel really thankful for the community that we've we've built here. So. I love it. Well, this backyard obviously has purpose and design. Yeah. So I'd love to know just, you know, how do you go from no garden to a garden? Why did you decide to put it in and just kind of that process? Yeah, well, we, um, when we were looking in house shopping in the Oak Cliff area, we wanted a house with a lot. And so I remember touring the house and I was like, yeah, the house is nice. I like it. And then like open the back doors and I was like, game over. <laughs> this is it. This is the one. Um, because, well, you were the one that's mm -hmm. Yeah, because I just like, I saw how much potential this backyard had. Um, there was actually like not a fence or anything. And so it just, it was so open and just, there was no fence anywhere you all to put up a mm -mm. fence yeah so you could see into the others uh yards and th there was a chain link right here um and everything was kind of overgrown but i just saw a lot of potential there um i some of my like fondest memories from childhood have been out, like i was always in the backyard i was always playing in the backyard um and then with my mom my mom really showed me the ins and outs of yeah. like planting things and so i um, that was something I've always wanted to carry on to. And so, yeah, so like made the yeah. dreams a reality. You know? Why the chickens? Okay. <laughs> Everyone thought I was crazy. And I had... Until um, they ate your eggs. Now they're great for Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> the ladies of Larkspur eggs. Um, no, so when I moved to Oak Cliff, um, I met the Garza's through where we worked out. And um, as I was starting to get to know people in the area, the Garza's had chickens. And so they asked, I don't, can't remember if it was me or Will. I know we chicken sat multiple times. And so I was started getting around chickens. I was like, Geez. explain that. Chicken sat? Chicken sitting, yes. <laughs> well, they would go out of town yeah. and you know, <laughs> like just make sure they had food and water and like let right. them in and out. And so um, like when I, we started going over there, I was like, these things are awesome. I've never been around chickens before, but I was so surprised that like, I, I someone like laughed at me because I was like, they're kind of like dogs or like, they're not anything like dogs and they're not, but they're just, they're actually pretty sweet. Um, especially if you like spend a lot of time around them and, um, I don't, I, they're so organic, I guess is the word of where it's, you know, they, it's something that you have where it gives you something it, it's purposeful so and chickens bring me a just a lot of joy just naturally being out and around them um and kind of just watching how simple their life is um but that are they you get jealous a lot of, of that simplicity sometimes yeah, yeah. <laughs> for sure for sure they just walk around and look for food all day you know <laughs> and then go to bed at night um so when when we were buying a house i had always talked about wanting chickens and so Will made the dream a reality. And it was funny because Will's mind, I'll talk about something for a while and it's kind of just like a dream. And so one day he was like, 
he came home and he said, I ordered 16 chickens. And I was like, what? <laughs> and I said, 16. And he said, um, he goes, I thought, I was like, I thought we would get like five. And he, he said, has he built that yet? When he, ordered? he hadn't built it yet. Oh. And so he said, <laughs> oh, he's going inside. <laughs> <laughs> and so I said, I thought we would get like five. And he said, well, you know, if you get five, you might as well get 10. And then I thought, well, if I, we have 10, we might as well get 15. And then he's like, and when you got to 15, they threw in an extra one for free. <laughs> I was like, okay. And so he was like, and they'll be here in May. So I need to get started building. <laughs> I said, okay. Um, and so, yeah, he designed the chicken coop himself and built it. And we had a lot of friends help us. And then the chicks came and they lived in our garage for a while and then they moved out to their new home. I love it. So obviously chicken sitting and chicken owning, not yeah. exactly the same. So like, what do you, what are some things that you learned that maybe surprised you as you became an owner and you continued down this path of just like, you know? Yeah, I think, you know, initially it was just, it's one of those things where it becomes like a reality and a responsibility. And then also, you know, we ordered so many because in the mailing process, it was kind of like a known thing of you, you some will die, yeah, you, you know, and we really, we only had one die and from there. And then we've had a few other losses in, in the meantime, because we only have 12 now. Um, we haven't had any deaths in a while, but you know, is there is a discipline and a work like that chicken coop took months to build and it was a big undertaking and then it was a learning process too yeah you know you don't know like what's the best food what what do they need like when do you let them out when do you let them in you know the possible diseases they can have what do you need to keep an eye on what are the predators and so it was one of those things where it was just an added something that we wanted and that we put on our plate but it is like an added responsibility to care yeah. for a being you know and so um, I think that was the biggest thing, but it was fun to have them as chicks, you know, because I was looking at pictures and we've had them for like exactly two years, yeah. um, which is funny that y'all asked to do this when it's been like an anniversary. Um, and so, you know, I like held all of them in my little palm and like watched as they grew and was able to like bring them out here and, you know, they know me, they know my voice, they know when I come out, it's tree time. And so... I love it. It's fun. So one of the reasons, uh, and when I called and we chatted about this, yeah. is just there's so much, you look at the scriptures and so much of the imagery is farming and it's caring for things and mm. it's sacrificial. And so one of the things that you and I got to talk about, and I'd love for you just to share whatever whatever comes up, is just how, what are you learning about God? What are you learning about yourself? What are you learning about the world and all that just as you make a sacrifice for these chickens and get to know them? Yeah, you know, so I... What we have talked about, and I, I know you know my story a lot, is I've experienced a lot of loss in my life. Um, and so, and I've experienced some hardship with like the loss of my brother, and then we've gone through, I'm just gonna throw it all out there, like we've gone through in, infertility, and then the adoption process has like been really beautiful, but it's been really hard. And so, um, I think that like, I always come back to, and whenever I process things, I, I journal and I write and I typically do it out here and I think it's because I draw a lot of symbolism um, from that because from what Coco when you say from that um, from my well, from my garden and from the chickens because it's a visual of the cycles and seasons of life um, that everybody goes through and you know they're there have been droughts and plagues and like things that come on that are so out of your control that um, that you kind of have to go through. And I think that a garden um, and chickens and caring for things um, really brings that to life of the, there's a lot of beauty in like seeing a product, like a chicken laying an egg and you open the nesting box and there's an egg there and you take it in and it's for you and it's, something that was made and created um but then you know when you see a chicken that is sick and that you don't it can't talk you don't know what's wrong with it and you like have to still care for it or you know your plants don't grow for whatever reason and it and it's frustrating and so I think that as I've like 
gone through this honestly like pretty hard season in my life like I've drawn a lot of a, a lot of meaning through my backyard in the same sense I don't know if that makes sense it does. Yeah. so I know uh you've got your journals there and you, yeah I got to read one of your excerpts which I love because it actually reminded me it reminded me of C.S. Lewis okay it just does everything does but it yeah. did and there was a lot of there was ache, and then there was beauty even in that ache. And so, if you're willing, yeah, uh, I would love for you to just share an excerpt or whatever you'd be wanting to share, just as you journal. Yeah, like I like how we joked about how <laughs> I was joking about reading my journals out loud, and then and then I was like, no, really, read but, your journals like, out loud. Yeah. you shouldn't joke about beautiful things because then we're like, put it on camera for everyone. So. Yeah, um, no, I will, and I actually like. I picked out a few that I'd be willing to read, and so y'all just like tell me, stop me. You pick the one you want. Yeah, pick. Well, I'll pick a couple that you really want to read, and I think our people would appreciate whatever you're willing to share. Okay, with them. I'll pick. So I journaled a lot, and I used a lot of gardening metaphors when Will and I went through IVF. Um, For those that don't know IVF. In vitro. Thank so, you. So, like, as we were struggling when we first we're pursuing kids um, we did the IVF process and then um, we had a failed transfer which just means that you know we went through the whole process and then my body just didn't take and so um, you know that my I used a garden metaphor throughout that and so um, this one that I that I'll read is the one I sent to you and then I have another one that I'll read that has been like my reflection that I wrote yesterday and so like you can kind of see the difference of where I am okay so and this was back in November and this was right when I found out that my transfer failed so it's called frozen we had an early hard freeze last night 25 degrees for the middle of November is very unusual I walked out to the garden today and everything was shriveled withered brown completely dead the sad thing is, is that I finally had my garden growing well. Dozens of tomatoes on the vine. Now those dozens are hanging there frozen on the dead vines. It's frustrating. You work and you work. You pour so much time, attention, money, energy, emotions into something and poof, it slips away. The lost hope hanging there on the vine. A reminder that nothing is promised. Now here we are in the winter, cold, frozen, dead, waiting for spring. Knowing spring can bring a renewed hope for a successful garden. Maybe we'll try the same thing again, or maybe we'll try new plants. All I know is that for now, it's winter. It's cold. I'm disappointed, sad, and grieving. Waiting, longing, stuck. Trying to find the warmth, the hope. Leaning on others, trying to stay close for the warmth. Knowing winter doesn't last forever and hoping it won't be too harsh. So that was like in a and when I was in a spot of a lot of grief. Um, That's a low battery? Oh no. <laughs> All right, well, we're good? All right. Guys, we're having a little bit of technical yeah. difficulty and I just kind of love the fact that we're gonna have music in the background yeah. and whatever that garden noise is, yeah. which is the garden, right? I mean, okay. it's messy and it's, you know, yeah. it's noisy outside it's and yeah, it's perfect. And we, we may not hear each other soon, so it'll be great. It'll be great. <laughs> um, okay, so that was like when I was in a really low point. And now, um, so this is a year and a half later. No, six months? No, a year and a half later. <laughs> and um, so, and I wrote this yesterday. I'm in my third season of my garden. As I look out and watch the rain, I reflect on the journey so far. I think about where I started, an untamed backyard full of potential. Together we have slowly crafted what we hoped for, chickens strutting around, a garden that is growing, and compost. It's idyllic, idyllic. It's what we wanted. I'm proud, but I'm humble. I remember the failures, mistakes, the deaths. And while we have had success, it is still hard. There is a discipline needed for achieving dreams, and it's easy to wonder if it's worth it especially on the hard days when you're exhausted and drained. But I remember there is beauty in the hardship, beauty in the growth and mistakes and failures. I celebrate small wins because life is messy and hard and out of my control. 
I will do what I can to control. I'll put in the love, the care, work, and effort, and take comfort in knowing that I am deeply loved and cared for, and that I am part of a much bigger garden, and my caretaker tends it perfectly. That's really beautiful. That's great, Coco. That's really beautiful. I think, like, what excited me when we were chatting on the phone talking about this is it's a lot of effort, you know? I mean, there's sort of a, I'm sure there's days when you come home from work and you're sort of like, I don't want to deal with that. Right. And, and yet, you see, even in the winters and the frozenness and the death and the why well, can't, you see so much beauty and goodness, which is why I think you keep doing it. Yeah. And I think that that, the parallels of like knowing that from that death can come life in the Christian life, I think we need those reminders all the time. Right. And you have this like living reminder in your backyard, which is, I think, both a, uh, a wounding and a gift, right? And yeah. that's often how God gives us our blessings. And so I love that. Um, hey, Coco, uh, this is a little bit switch up from one of the kay. questions. But when people get pets, they usually like dogs give immediate affection. Yeah. But there's, off, there's obviously a connection that you have with the chickens, but they don't give affection the way a cat or yeah. a dog does. What kind of affection do you, how do they talk to you? Where you feel like oh, they love you back because I know that yeah. you love them. Um, they so it's funny. I think especially with me when I open the door, like they usually are all scattered, and they all like come to this. <laughs> they gate come to right Mama here. right here. Yeah. And oh, that's so awesome. They and like when I'm back there, and y'all see in a few minutes, they follow me around, um, and like will kind of talk with me and then I there's a few which I'll try to point out when we go back there that real, they'll squat which chickens do that naturally um especially when they lay like are laying but um there are a few that I can pick up and like the other day one just like sat on my lap for a while <laughs> are they squatting is that their signal that pick me up is that what they're saying um I I don't really know to be honest with you, I'm sure there's probably a chicken expert yeah, out sure. there that yeah. like knows yeah. and I don't want to pretend that I'm an expert. I've heard that they do it when they start laying um, and so I don't know if it's a submission thing or, or what. Well, I wonder if we should go ahead and do that. Is that right? Can yeah, we go back well, there I, was now? Just, I was just saying got... I love that. I mean, it just reminded me in John when Jesus yeah. is like, I'm the shepherd and my sheep know my voice yeah. and they fall and like this sense of like you there are so many parallels to your relationship with them and like mm -hmm. they you know like you said their lives they come they eat and they go to bed and yeah. like there's this trust that you're going to come out the next day right and provide for them again because you you care about them and they yeah. don't y'all don't speak this there's a divide here right. that like y'all don't speak the same language yeah and yet there's this provision that they've learned to trust in so that they provide you eggs because they know you're going to nourish mm -hmm. them and they're going to give back to you and you know, I think about, like, if we could learn from chickens, right, to mm -hmm. trust that God is going to do that, even when it's cold, even when it's rainy, even when it's, right. that God is still working, you're still working for their good, and I yeah. think there's so many, problems. I would love to see the chickens respond to you, Okay. so we're going to take this on the move. Uh, <laughs> so tell us where to go right now. Why don't you hold that, this is our microphone, okay. so that way you can have it, okay, and then okay. we'll just follow you, and uh, well, I gotta get guys in. will follow us to the best of their ability. Uh, they're I'm probably. I understand We'll let Minnie come out later and feed, up. feed it oh, some more. <laughs> I know, I told you. What's up? Okay. I, they came running. So. <laughs> Hi, girls. All right, what are you feeding them? Mealworms, mealworms, their right. favorite. Actually, their favorite is bananas. Are they live or are they um, dried? They're dried. Yeah, so. And like this one, see, this one really knows me. Oh man, they, yeah, yeah. they are happy to eat from the palm of your hand. Look at that, I'll hold this for you. Okay. Keep it easy on you. So name the different varieties. You're yeah, so, about. all right, so what's this one's name? <laughs> yeah, I can do names. Yeah. Um, this is Shoddy. That was named by the Shugart. <laughs> um, this is Julie Andrews, named by Ryan Ness. This one is Stevie, named by Isaac. This one got the name Tumor because yeah. Tumor had a name, and then Tumor got sick, and she doesn't give us eggs or anything, but... But you love her. She lives her best life. Yeah. <laughs> and she's hanging in there. So, um, 
That one's rooster, and then that one's Snoop. Okay, rooster's a hen. Explain why you call her rooster. Um, because she crows, um, even though she's a hen, because she's the queen bee. She's the leader. Oh, she's the alpha. Yeah. All right, rooster. I dig it. She doesn't look like she's the biggest, necessarily. No, Hetty is our biggest. That's Which one's Hetty? her right oh, yeah. here. <laughs> um, <laughs> she's Hetty Lamar, like the old act the actress. Yes, that was named by our friend Dan. Um, if I had to like pick a chicken that represented chickens, I think I would pick that. Hetty? Yeah. Um, that speckled one right there is Sybil, and she's my girl. She's yeah. the one that just will sit on my lap and is real sweet. Love it. Is she the Americana? Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I like get the, all the breeds confused because Will did the ordering. So I know these are black stars. Um, didn't tell you the rest. How many feathers are on their backs? Right. <laughs> no, they can go higher than six feet. They can fly, but they don't want to get out. They, like... they don't. No. When they first, when we first started letting them out, Stevie is our flightiest bird. She uh, will be the one that if I come out and she's perched up on our compost, she'll come flying across. So she accidentally went over the fence um, when oh. they first started going out in the backyard. And they have a pit bull, and so I, oh, I freaked out. Yeah. Did she make um, it back on her own? She did, she yeah. She flew back? And now, like, none of them... She's like, guys, you don't want to go over there. Right. There's there, a there, There's plenty of food, and so they're happy, and so they don't want to... They don't <laughs> want to go anywhere. Um, Do you feed them things besides the mealworms, or is that their main... No, they have chicken feed that we get from a store, and then they will root around. So we have compost um which they'll kind of dig around in as well um with our leftover food scraps as long as it's not too fermented and then um yeah they have their feed they like bananas like if we have some fruit or something that's kind of about to go bad we'll come out and give it to them so love it yeah do they come out in the morning and love to go out and look for worms on the grass and that kind of stuff yes yeah yeah so the, you'll see them they're what they do is they just walk around and they'll scratch and they're trying to dig up insects. Um, there's a few, um, this one right here, she'll like, you'll see her running across the yard chasing flies and she's hunting. <laughs> she's your athlete. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Sporty spice. But, and I can like, we can walk back there and I can show you all the nesting boxes and the You wanna follow us? Yeah, let's do it. So Will made this whole yeah. thing. He designed and built yeah. this thing. Yeah. It's pretty incredible. He calls it the Fort Knox of chicken coops, too, because <laughs> there's chicken wire even under yeah. the oh, bottom well, of no it. So there are no, no we have not had any predators because wow. he didn't, he did not want any predators. Want anything to chance. Yeah. How do they do in the wintertime out here? Um, good. I mean, they run hot, and so we'll just put up tarp right here, and so. We really haven't had a hard enough freeze where we were scared. You don't have to put a heat lamp in there at all. Mm -hmm. okay. They actually say that it can like it causes fires a lot. Oh, so look at that! Bounty, yes. Look at that. A bounty for the day. So and different. This is just today. Yeah, different chickens lay different colored eggs. So. So this like I know this one is either from. There are Martine or uh, not Martine chicken because they're the black ones that lay the blue eggs. And then our white ones are from Rooster and Julie Andrews, the black and white ones. And then the rest are brown. So Do they it. taste different? No. They don't. Um, but of course we are biased that, you know, these are fresh. They're, you'll tell they're different than store-bought eggs because they're just a lot more bright, vibrant yellow colors. Um, the yolks? How many eggs do you eat a day? I actually, so if anybody wants to buy eggs, <laughs> <laughs> you follow the ladies with the LOL eggs on Instagram. It's the ladies of Larkspur. Um, so we actually sell like, I would, most I would of them. guess, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. We, I have friends from my gym or from the neighborhood that buy eggs. So, I, I mean, we'll do breakfast for dinner once a week, and I'll boil eggs sometimes. Love, but, it. Yeah, Love it. I don't eat a ton. Done. All right. So, we're in a pandemic. Right. Although it feels like we're not being in your backyard. It's a nice little escape. Yeah. It is nice to have moments of reprieve. 
you're not only a gardener and a chicken mom and a, a mom who's now adopted, you're also an LPC. Yeah. And you know how to help people. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and so I'd love just any advice, thoughts, just words that you, if you could share with the people of St. Jude and you can through here, just stuff that maybe you're learning or growing or thoughts or encouragement or just something to leave them with. Um, yeah, you know, I think, so, uh, of course, in my work, you know, a lot of, a lot of things is how, how you view it and how you perceive it. And so, um, I think during the hard times that can be a lot easier said than done, right? Like, um, I've cried many a tears during this (laughs) pandemic, um, just because of like the changes and the hardship that it's brought. But, um, I view life as a great story and so I think that if everything was easy it would be a really boring story and so my encouragement would be that view this as like a conflict in one of your chapters in your story and um how does how does the protagonist come from it like what do you want your story to look like and so um hopefully like yeah, there was some mistakes I made. There were some things that I should have handled differently. And um, I'm learning that a lot about myself, like being a new mom is like, I feel like I fail all the time. Um, but I also think that I'm becoming a better person. And I, and I hope, that's my hope for all of this. And I think that we have a really unique opportunity as human beings to come out of this, learning a lot of lessons um, and to make all of our stories a really great one. So that would be my encouragement. Any last thoughts, Mark? I think that's perfect. I love that. Thanks, Coco. Thanks for letting yeah. us hang out with you and the ladies of Larkspur. And Thanks for thinking of me. Love it. Uh, well, I think, I think Coco's backyard and her life is one of a continual evidence and testimony that life comes out of death and good can come out of hard seasons um, and that there's, there's beauty and resiliency. And so uh, we hope that encourages you today. So nobody's told you today that they love you we do but more importantly the god who created chickens and nourishes us every day through his good creation he's crazy about you all (laughs) peace out friends All right, Minnie, which one's your favorite? That one? Why is that one your favorite? I mean, this one. That one? one, The black one? Yeah. Does he let you pet him? Or she? I said he. That's not right. She did, Minnie, because the first thing she let you pet him as soon as you came out. Are you faster than the chickens or the chickens faster than you? I'm faster than the chickens. That's right. So you you can get to those eggs, can't you? What? Do you enjoy eating eggs? She takes really good care of the chicken. She will let them out in the morning sometimes, and they've started to follow her around too when she plays. Minnie, come back over here. Come back to where they are. Good job. Oh, yay. She also chases them too, so. (laughs) You chase them? Minnie, have you ever eaten one of those worms? Nope. Nope. Probably not any good, huh, for humans. Nope. <laughs> you think Mr. Josh will eat one? Yeah. <laughs> you say yes? Oh, yeah. Put some chocolate on it. Yeah, yeah right? Yeah. <laughs> Probably worse things to eat. Good job, Minnie. So they're two years old. Yeah. How long a life expectancy? Not, I don't think super long. I want to say like, you know, five years. Will you get more then soon? I, I don't know. I don't, if it, <laughs> yeah, it depends. I mean, if we stay in this house, for sure. Kind of depends on yeah. the next backyard. Yeah, yeah. makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> We're good. Awesome. Just giving some video of her chasing. <laughs> yeah, it's a good video. Thank you, Miss Coco. Yeah, for coming by. (laughs) 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 (laughs)
Good job, Minnie. You are fast. Oh, yeah. Toomer's like, come on. <laughs> I've had a hard life already. Yeah, <laughs> All right, baby girl.